All right, now I'm on page 359 of the GoMath textbook. Let's follow along. It says, identify the independent and dependent variables, then write an equation to represent the relationship between them. Okay. So an online store lets customers have their name printed on any item they buy. The total cost, C, in dollars is the price of the item, P in dollars, plus $3.99 for the name. Okay. Now, they say identify the independent and dependent variables. Me personally, drawing the equ or creating the equation is easier for me to do first, and then I can easily see what the independent and dependent variables are. That may not be the case for you, okay? But solve it how it's easiest for you. So let me show you how I would do this problem. So I see the total cost is C. So I know that's what my equation is going to equal. That's what I'm looking for, right? Hey, how much is this going to cost me? That's why we do a lot of the math we do in real life. How much is this going to cost me? Okay. So I know the cost is going to be over here by itself. That's what I want to find, the total cost. Um, if I want to buy something at the store, let's say I buy a, a, a trophy and I want to get somebody's name engraved on it. Well, the total cost is going to be the price of the trophy plus they charge me $3.99 to put the name on it. Okay, so now I can see very easily that the cost of this item depends on the item that I choose. So the cost, C, is my dependent variable and P the price of the item that I buy is going to be my independent variable because this the cost depends on what item I buy and how much that item costs. So the total cost depends on the price of the item. So me personally, I like to work these backwards, I guess, a little bit. Instead of looking at reading the first part, I like to write out the equation because to me, it's easier to see the equation. And once I know the equation, it's a lot easier for me to see which one is the dependent and independent variable. But I want you to solve it how, the way it's easiest for you. Okay, I'm continuing. Let's look at another example. A raft travels downriver at a rate of six miles per hour. The total distance d in miles that the raft travels is equal to the rate times the number of hours. Okay. So a raft travels downriver at a rate of six miles per hour. So we want to find the distance, right? I'm going to use, did they tell us what to use for distance? Yeah, D for distance. So we want to find the distance. And to find the distance, we need to take six miles per hour, so times every hour. Every hour it's going to go another six miles. Well now that I have my equation it's very easy for me to see which is dependent and independent. The distance depends on how long we go. So the dependent variable is the D, distance. And the independent variable is the hour. That's what's going to change. Uh, the number of hours we go, um, let's say we go three hours, then I can figure out the distance that we've gone. Okay, so the distance depends on how long we do the activity for. Okay, number three, apples are on sale for $1.99 per pound. Okay, so for every pound it costs $1.99, so I know I'm going to have $1.99 times the number of pounds, and I want to find the total cost. So again, I'm going to have what my cost is, so often, this is the way we use math in real life, I want to know how much does it cost. Well, it costs $1.99 times every pound I get. Okay, And if we were estimating here, we would say this is about 2 bucks a pound. So then I could quickly see, okay, if I get 5 pounds, it's 10 bucks. If I get uh, 3 pounds, it's 6 bucks. So now I can see that my cost depends on how many pounds I buy. So the dependent variable in this one is my cost, and the independent variable is how many pounds I decide to, to buy. Okay. All right, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.